So in this case we're filling a company tax return and I did actually import the wrong data file so I'll connect again and bring in the correct one. Test 2. So if you just uh, you know if you've only got one company it's going to be a whole lot easier. Noting here that the test 2 name is not matching the name there so you will get a warning but I'm accepting that and bringing in the data for 2022 year for the company tax return. So I've got my data there, my balance sheet, my profit and loss, and now I can go to work just double checking my classifications. You'll notice that everything must be mapped to the lowest level here. So let's just go through this and double check our classifications. So cash is cash and I'll just fix that right so cash float um, liabilities you'll notice this uh, so only the expenses that haven't fully classified anyway it is worth just having a look through these line items making sure everything's classified correctly it is pretty easy to get your classifications right um, for tags here you really for the balance sheet tags you just got some options not to import but you know I don't think that's a great idea you should generally import all your line items if for instance you had an issue like for, in, for instance this had been classified to inventory then you could easily fix that by just looking through the look through the taxonomy you know it's it's a simple taxonomy so current assets and down to cash and cash equivalents bank account so you classify that as a bank account and or you, you could do it this way so you could if you had a mistake or you had it classified as other current assets just bank if you want once you know your naming conventions bank so let's have a look at expenses and see what's not classified depreciation okay so you really want to know what kind of depreciation and if you had a look through here you'd find your depreciation you'd open that up remembering logit works from a tax perspective and you can actually prepare your accounts with tax depreciation facts if you prefer so if that makes life easier for you which is often the case with small business entities simply using tax depreciation in the accounts then you'd say what this is I don't actually think there's anything in this line item I think it's just a an empty uh, empty zero line item so something to note if you had something that's non-deductible you would tag it you've got some tags here non-deductible revenues if you had a revenue item which was non-assessable cash flow boost uh, I think that used to be non-assessable this is not even in here actually it's it was in a prior year but you just tag it like that so you've got tags and then you've also got related accounts so with a related account if you had a plant and equipment at cost you could link it with the related account we don't now let's dive over to that tax form you can add it in if it's not there already make sure you select the right year and the system will activate the components that are relevant so you've got your taxable income your tax payable the form the front cover of the form should be filled and if you if you validate with your error checking it should ask you to put in things like for instance company type the private company resident um, mostly mostly you're probably going to have a small business entity and a base rate entity base rate entity with a lower tax rate for trading for trading entities right so let's just ignore other errors because this is a test entity and I won't be able to clear the errors completely so I will just move through and show you what's happening in here so you've got your profit and loss items everything coming out of zero will filter into the correct sections if you've classified them noting that the classification is handled by a machine learning algorithm and it is actually pretty accurate so uh, it's not a big uh, not a big deal to make changes though if you did need to change something you know other consumables you could always open that in another tab and if you found if you couldn't see them there I can see it but you could just go control F other 
and you've got your other consumables and you could map if you you know if this was a direct cost you could just map it into what it is which is in this case just some purchases and then if you went back here and refreshed you'll notice that that line item will now transfer up into cost of goods so there it is over there so easy to make changes reconciliation section of logit is pretty powerful and it will make some decisions for you so if you've got superannuation sitting on your balance sheet unpaid at 30 june 2022 that's non-deductible but the super payable for the for the balance at the end of the prior year 30 june 2021 becomes other deductible it's now deductible right you also see here that temp we've used temporary full expensing in this example and I do have a video you can dive into temporary full expensing uh, video that we've got in the video section and learn more about that but you can see here it's added back so it becomes non-deductible from an accounting point of view but the tax values come in here so where are those tax values coming from we do have temporary full expensing and that is generating a depreciation report here we've got a single item there piece of plant and then that is coming into this tax form and you can see here you've got your deduction for decline in value right which is coming straight through from that depreciation report and then it's also getting inserted back in here at decline a deduction for decline in value so that's the tax depreciation value coming in and then you've got your tax calculation now something to, to note with your tax calc if you do have installments that you've paid during the year PAYG installments you can bring them in and then if you did have if you did have dividends those dividends can be handled as long as you've put in your sh your shares and your shareholders then you can populate your dividends so here you can see I've built out a dividend for the financial year and then those dividends are populating into the form along with the franking credit so there are videos on franking credits and the share register which are make life a little bit easier for you and then if we go back into the form I'll show you where those are auto filling so if we come through the um, through the financial and other information in the tax return we see dividends and interest schedules, the franking credits broken out and calculated automatically by our dividend calculator based on whether the entity is a base rate entity or not. And then the frank dividends, you'll notice the franking transactions through here and there are some training videos on how to understand the franking transactions and any tax installments paid so you could get this kind of outcome. Typically you wouldn't want to see a minus value like that because that would end uh, indicate that you've got a uh, you've possibly got um, franking debits tax so typically you wouldn't want to pay dividends in excess of whatever the franking credit is associated with those uh, with those franking credits the balance of the franking credits maybe partially frank your dividends if that's the case but anyway you could always get advice from a tax agent or an accountant uh, if that was the case to help you complete this now I've just realized that I've got an error in here and it's a, a classification error and this is actually worth noting what this actually means because you can see this interest income I didn't check it carefully enough and it was misclassified so let me fix it to interest received and then when I go back to that form what you would note is that the form should activate the interest component now in the interest component we've got the accounting fact we've got a decrease in interest and this decrease in interest will then reflect in the reconciliation section as other income not included in accessible income so decrease in interest and the, the reason for that is that this is treated as accounting income with no tax income you need to put the taxable value in because you can see you may have some TFN credits that's the one of the reasons and it isn't you know in the case of something like dividends partnership income or trust distributions you could potentially have a different value for tax to accounting and that's where the reconciliation comes into its own because in this case you can see we'd have an increasing adjustment in interest 
So there's your increasing adjustment, which becomes other assessable income, i.e. the taxable value a, a greater than the accounting value, which is already in. So bear that in mind. It could also go the other way. You could also have a situation where your interest is less than. It's more likely the case is going to be that you're going to have something that's less than. So it would be a dividend or a trust distribution or partnership income. Then you'd have less than and then, the, and then in the reconciliation section, other income not included in the assessable income, i.e. The, in, the accounting value greater than the tax value. So just bear that in mind. Um, that then is, is filled and completed and you can move on with the rest of the tax schedule.